Uh, F-Dot here, just want to ask you a couple of questions before you go ahead and take on Luminosity. Let's zoom out, though, real quick. Your team has kind of, uh, I think, underperformed, but I- I'm not too concerned. I feel like you guys can definitely pull it out. What are your thoughts on the situation? Um, I think we had a pretty rough split uh, start to this split so far. I think we had a pretty poor understanding on how the meta was going to start out. Um, I don't think we expected healers to be as relevant as they were. And then the first week was just this undervaluing Shibuan case. So I think we have a really good grasp on how the meta is now. So I think we're way more confident as a team. The strength of your players has never been questioned. It's always been how your players really interact together and, and can they pull off the win as a team. What are the steps that you as a coach have taken to really increase CLG's ability to, to coalesce and become one unit? They're, they're all top of the, the line players, as you said, um, all best in the class. I think they, I think having an outside perspective really helps them function to bet, better as a team. I think having an opinion that um, can differ from theirs helps them a lot as well. Um, they're all very open to taking criticism to play and uh, learning different things that they could do, learning different strategies. So um, I'm not sure about how other coaches go about meshing with the team, but I think this team handles a coach really well with taking criticism and learning how to take that criticism and improve their gameplay with it. Well, hopefully that leads to a positive, Slaney. Focusing on the matchup today, you guys going up against Luminosity, a squad that has given you guys trouble in the past, but I think most people would agree that you're the top card. What's your honest assessment of Luminosity Gaming? Are they really the team to be uh, a team to be scared of, or are they just kind of overperforming occasionally? Uh, I I think LG is actually a, a really good team. I think they just have pretty strong inconsistency issues. Um, with the days they play well, I think they're a, definitely a top tier team that can take a game off of anybody. But I think their inconsistency is a really big issue for them. Um, so I think, but I still think as long as we're playing on a game that even if they're on their best, we should still beat them. So. Hey. And how do you how do you plan to do that? Let's assume LG are fire, firing on all cylinders. How do you guys plan to really tackle LG and get the W? I think uh, as long as we stick to our game plan and what we've been practicing and what we know works for us, um, we should just win. We, I think every single player on our team is better mechanically than them. Um, and I think we should be able to win the draft. Um, I think as long as we win the draft, I think it should just be a easy 2-0 for us. Awesome. Well, good luck. Thank you for joining us, Slaney, and uh, have a good day. Thank you, Slaney, for sitting down with that interview with Captain Man Bun and still giving us great analysis. In fact, it's so great to be able to hear from their thoughts. It is Finch here. I'm joined by Ryan Agro Bailey. And really, what, what I liked hearing is what they thought went wrong. They didn't think the healer meta was going to be so strong. They maybe didn't value the Shibalanke. Yeah. Those are definitely adjustments you can make moving further into the split. It is, but it does concern me a little bit because what did we hear, hear from CLG whenever they started struggling towards the back half of the spring split? That they didn't really grasp the meta at the time right. very well. It's becoming a trend for this team, and so it's important for them not only to understand what's happening right now, but if you're just playing catch up all the time, you're not right. going to be able to get ahead of it and, and try and be the you know be the founders of a new meta. Try and establish your own, make teams play your style. If you're trying to catch up to what everyone else is doing, you're never going to get ahead. And especially in this matchup, it might be tough. That's what LG does pretty well, actually. True. You remember at the start of the split, that's what Weekend was very. They felt very confident about. It. They knew exactly what everybody was going to be doing, and they'd scrimmed so much. So they got to make sure they keep up on that. As we take a look at the standings, these are the two squads that had a bit of a slow start to this summer split so far, both 0 and 3. But for someone, things are about to look a little bit better as they're able to grab that first win and get some momentum. Exactly. It's it. Someone's getting a win here. Whoever it is is off to a slightly better second that's half. Right. But overall, whoever loses this set is in, is in a dark spot for the rest of the summer split. Starting off 0-4, I know United, I believe they started 0-3. I don't think they went all the way to 0-4, and they still barely made it to land. 0-4 is nearly a death sentence right now. Even if United had started that way, neither of these teams has a world championship pedigree to fall back on, right? True. To help you re-motivate and get back in. So you'd certainly want to be able to build this momentum as soon as you can and start moving forward. And I think both these squads are certainly do capable of doing it. I mean, this CLG roster, don't they just feel better than this 0-3 record when you look down the talent list for oh, sure? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like CLG is top two level in, in NA yeah. just based on talent alone, but... I've been saying that for all of season five, right? And, <laughs> and they haven't been top two since the first few weeks of the spring split where they were the best team in North America. But you know they can do it. I mean, we saw during that first half that they can do it. I, I really do think it's just understanding of the meta. I think that picks and bans are really, really indicative of how CLG is going to succeed and if they will succeed 
in any given game. So uh, the draft is always so important for every team, but it seems to be particularly important for CLG. And I feel like it's been more important just in Season 5 in general. I mean, I don't, I don't know how fair that is to say. They're always very important, obviously, your compositions, but so much more right now, it feels like you can just get out drafted to the point where you have a small window to try and find your victory as we follow along with homie Efe, who always seems to end up finding, uh, finding a way to look good for this team. But it, it just feels like you got to make sure you're right there with them. You don't let yourself get drafted into a corner nowadays. Yeah, I mean, especially with, with the way that teams are really committing to one style these days. Yes. It's before in Smite, you know, season one, season two was a lot of, hey, let's uh, pick these gods that are good, and maybe they'll work well together. Now, I mean, look at the last draft from Trifecta, where in game one, they go double hunter, four physical in general, and they're forcing fire giants that normally wouldn't make any sense, but are important for them to get at that time with their team composition. Teams have such a better understanding of how they can play the map and what their picks are supposed to do, that if you go in and are like, oh, we'll just pick whatever we think is good overall and not what works well together or what works well against the opposition, you're going to have a tough time. And it's because the, it's kind of changed a little bit, right? Sieging is harder now. Early advantages aren't as a big a deal as they used to be, so it's kind of harder to sort of, I don't want to say stumble into the wind, but just pick the best thing in each role doesn't work nearly as well now that because you, you have to be so much more focused on actual game plan and capitalizing on that. And we're following along with someone who's very good at that, in particular, Weekend here in the jungle for LG, who sort of, I feel like, really made a bit of a resurgence here in Season 5. It used to be we can initiate, we can set up, you know, is he mechanically at the same level as everyone else? I think he's answered a lot of those questions here now. He certainly is a strong jungler in his own right, can win games in his own right here for this team. I mean, and, and LG isn't relying entirely on him, though, every game, and I think that's important yes. for this squad, that they don't have to have Weekend be the guy every game. He, if he needs to play setup for Keegs in the mid lane, he can. Let Clout be the dude for a game here and there. Let Kiki yeah. do something weird. You know, th that that option is there for LG, and they're a flexible team because of it. I would say it exactly like that. It's a boon. I don't think that yeah. that's when they put the team together. I don't think that was ever the plan. It's like all of a sudden now that can be a plan, right? Sure. Like we can, can just win it for us for sure. So I think you're right. It's just another option that makes LG strong as we're just about ready to move into picks and bans between these two squads. Game one about to be underway. And I'm always excited to see what we see get prioritized here earlier. You heard it from Slaney. They recognize how strong healers are now. Are they going to be banning those here out of the gate, though, is the question. Most likely, as well as the X-Balls, the other yes. one that he mentioned. And sure enough, that's is. going to be their first ban. And going back to what I think is what we were just talking about, about Weekend and him being the dude sometimes, I think a god that we're going to start to see more and more of is Mercury. I think he's yes. really, really strong right now. And that is a Weekend god, 100%. He's had a great track record with that god throughout his career. So I'd like to see LG try and prioritize that. It's also a pick for Homie that he likes a lot. Take yeah. it out of his hands and give Luminosity a solid chance to win that late game. And what is it you like so much about Mercury too? Is it, I mean, cause it feels like he is clearly very strong late game, but is it just that he has utility to get him through the early mid now too as well? Or, or what is that you feel like so strong about this pick? He's, he sets up for his teammates in the early game very well and then just does it by himself in the late, but it's yes. his farming potential that I think makes him so strong overall i mean he is really really good at power farming those camps consistently just getting around the map and making sure that he's staying ahead in farm chang ah being prioritized here very early on by clg so very much so right respecting those healers a little bit more as they grab that and banning away the shibalanke but also i think we just heard through that it is going to be oceans that's in for keegs here Correct. instead so that's just a heads up that you're going to be seeing oceans in there instead of keeg now in that middle lane and that's the raijin for him in that mid lane. Now, yeah. Oceans, you may remember him as an ADC main from back in the day, but sure. don't forget that he moved to mid towards the end of the last season and didn't have a ton of success there. Really struggled during his time in that mid lane. So we'll see if this time on the bench, you know, just watching from behind the scenes has given him time to get back and ready and up to that standard. A lot of magical being prioritized here by CLG so far. The Chang ah, Giannis and the Sylvanas all being picked up, not just magic, but sustain as well. I do like it though. Chang'e and Sylvanas aren't the most mobile gods in the whole game, so Giannis kind of helped to cover that. Yes, a little bit too. I like it as well, and I love that you're, they're giving their priority pick in CLG to uh, Final K. Final K has been a really consistent rock for them in that solo lane. He's clearly Does he play picked a lot up. Of Geb? No, he doesn't because that's because he's playing well and he doesn't have to play Geb solo. But you said he's been a rock for them. Yeah, I meant metaphorically, Finch. All right, God, try and use some of that brain power to think outside the box for once in your life. My goodness. He's playing Chonga in this game. When was the last time you saw Final pl K play Geb? Why would you even ask me that? I would never have called him a rock. <sighs> that's because you don't think in, in, in these 
high intensity situations. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a real high level analogy, like a rock. Uh, you didn't oh, get it, goodness. did you? I, what do you? Obviously, I did. I mean, I did a bit, Ryan. Bad bit, Finch. <laughs> Erlung Shen comes in for LG. This one, though, I do like. This has been a, a, a great pick in the. We see in the jungle a lot. Sino oh, has yeah. been playing it there to great effect. So we'll see if that's what LG want to try and do here as well. Bacchus, though, a bit of a surprise. Mm. Now, Bacchus does have some anti heal in there. That A little bit of that in there, as well as the burst. So perhaps that's what they're trying to look for here with this pick, but not a priority pick at all very often. No, but. I kind of like it here. This is an aggressive graft from it LG, and, and, and if they're going to commit to it, I think that Bacchus fits in with that very, very nicely. Remember, Bacchus Belch got a change not too long ago where before you needed to actually complete the stun in order to get that anti-heal out of that Belch. Now, as soon as you hit that first tick, That's right. they're anti-healed, 50%. So it oh, is a wow. pretty solid selection. What? Where is this going? Okay, so right no, Raijin solo? Discordia mid, or is it Discordia solo, Raijin mid? I mean, I feel like you're just throwing away the option of Discordia jungle here, Ryan. I mean, that's right on the table in front of you. That You're right. <laughs> I am throwing that away. <laughs> Honestly, when you think about it, it probably could work. I like, think it could, too. Unruly Magic clears jungle camps really, really She's well. She's got great clear. Strife clears jungle camps pretty well. <laughs> probably not, though. Probably, probably is going to be long jungle, yes. But, but it, 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 could work. it could happen. This is a lot of damage, though, and you talked about how it's aggressive. Everyone on this roster can kill you. Everyone on this yep. LG squad really is a threat, and I think that could potentially pose a problem for this Sylvanas. I talked a little bit about his immobility. Targeting Sylvanas early on is a very common strategy. It is, and if, you, if CLG is going for four damage dealers, well, like three and a half with Chang'e, why not go for three and a half to four yourself, right? Yeah. You aren't lacking in that frontline presence that L that CLG will have. That's usually the, di the disadvantage That's right. of going for mages or whatever in the solo lane. You don't have that in this game because CLG's already committed to not having one themselves in that lane. You're trying to pick a better value mage in this opportunity, and I don't know. Maybe it'll work. All right. Instead of who's going to win, I'm going to make you tell me where this LG squad's going. Oh, that's even D worse. That's even harder. Yeah, okay. Give me just your – okay, well, who's, who's soloing for the squad? That's all I want to know. Raijin. It's hard to say. I'm with you on that one. Maybe uh, Raijin solo, but it's a little bit hard to say. We'll get it over to the casters so you can find out exactly where everything's going. Thanks a lot, friends. Tom and Tully. We were over there. Now we're over here. We're bringing you the game right now. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Both Raijin and Discordia together. A lot of flexibility considering Weekend likes to play a lot of different things for entertainment purposes on a stream, but maybe he found something spicy inside the competitive aspect. We have seen the Raijin jungle before, the Arlong jungle as well. Mages have been making their way over there in the solo lane. Ton of mess that could be happening here. Right now, we're going to ask you guys, not where everybody's going to go. But who's going to take the victory? LG, CLG? I mean, what are you feeling? I think that CLG have a slight edge in this one because of the fact that they can itemize against both the Discordia and the Raijin. It was a similar aspect where the Double Hunter in the first set, where it was Trifecta going for the Ular, Hachiman. You build physical defense. As long as you don't fall too far behind early, you kind of start to defend that all that physical damage. Same case here, except magical. Well, CLG have had their troubles, but we'll see if they're able to deal with them today. Let's get into game number one. And it will be exactly as I predicted. Kiki, so cheeky on the solo Discordia. I mean, that's not even fair. It's a female god of goddess, of course. <laughs> of course it's going to be Discordia also, solo lane. Also, also, welcome back, Luminosity friend Oceans is filling in for Keegs. No word on whether or not that's permanent or not. Hopefully we'll talk to Luminosity in the break. And get that info for you just a little bit. Weekend getting invaded on here or doing the invading. Trouble for homie Effie. And Weekend. Not going to find that find last, the last shot. one. The mink form gave him that extra boost of attack speed with the Fatalis effect. And stripping away that speed's a lot of experience swing now yep. because of the timer differential. He can easily, we can specifically go back to his own speed after clearing out the whole entire right side of the map. Chunga solo lane for final K. Doesn't have the lane presence at level one to be able to clear the wave quickly and then come defend their own buffs. That's been one of the complaints about some of these mage solos. We can hear just looking for the blue buff invade, and Final K is gonna try to stop that, but he's gonna get punished for it. Still interested in looking around there, and you know this is the the meta game, the true meta game answering to itself. Uh, the the tank versus tank scenario in the solo lane is no longer the case. 
So we've seen these pseudo tanks, these half and halves come out. Uh, most notably the Aphrodite, I think, was the one that started it, where you see a tank build, but maybe a Soul Reaver, and, well, OBFA is going to go down here easily. Erwin's going to get met up by the mid laner as well. All oh, this chain lightning damage. Oceans barely outside the tower. Not going to eat a tower shot. Two quick kills for Luminosity. This early invade working out big. Just clean stuff from Luminosity. This is what the squad needs. They need to get off to a nice start and continue it going. And per our conversation about the solo lane, just to cut it short real quick, these mages came through that we're building half tank. And then we saw that even in the minor league today with a, with, with a half tank Hades. And, well, I guess that opens up the door to non-tanks. In the world of Discordia, I really don't want to see a tanky Discordia. Totally. Definitely not. And having a global passive with that... You know, boost of physical or magical power for whoever, whoever has that highest top player damage of your own team is not a bad idea when Weaken is going to be this aggressive, abusing the fact that Homie Efe was only level one. Now, Susano, in his own right, has a lot of mobility, but he has to get those abilities in order to utilize it. So only having Storm Kata, he was caught between a rock and a hard place at that right side mid harpies. You know, it's interesting. In game, we don't show you the player damage charts the way we do on the spectator. So if you guys, uh, Discordia get, knows who has the passive, but, by, but not by much. Solo laners generally will have that top damage, right? Yes. Because they're trading in and out. But if you're a Discordia in that solo lane, you really don't want to have top damage. You want your teammates to take advantage of that. So that's going to be an interesting thing going forward, watching Kiki try not to exchange poke in order to dish out that passive. Or maybe Weekend trying to really put himself more out there than he already has. Mm. Being level 4, getting the 5 base and then 2 a level, you're looking at 13 additional physical power at level 4 as Weekend not going to be able to steal away the blue buff, but he's looking for some sort of invade. These backhands looking mighty tempting. These have been really important. Gets one of them, not the other two. Those go to the Chongda. And, uh, you know, just a casual conversation. Well, that's not so casual. Homie Efe getting stormed on, and we'll be able to get out of there. That jet stream just came before the initial knockup. Even though he got knocked up before teleporting to it, once you get it through, you still can activate it yet again. If that knockup goes through before jet stream, guaranteed dead. Percussive Storm finishes the job. We can... Not even level 5 yet. Does have his boots finished off, so he's able to traverse the map pretty smoothly. And the speed buff can help him out with that as well. The Arlong jungle is something that has come up and down totally. And people, honestly, are, are still very split. Educated people are still split. How do you feel about the Arlong jungle? I mean, it's aggressive in the early game, and as it should be for its entire kit with the way it engages between not just the ultimate, but using your escape to engage. You have a Fatalis effect on the mink, but... How does he transition in the mid to late game? If you can't survive for four full seconds before your ultimate gives you the heal, well then how really valuable is this pick? You have to figure out, do you go for a damage build or defensive? Oh, narrowly avoiding her when's ultimate. Can't do the same with the portal. Not dead just yet. Finds the taunt, stunned out. That's what you were talking about. Not able to go ahead and get the heal because final K's rotation was so hot. Able to dance away from the stun. No big deal there. But a very quick burst down of Weaken prevents the heal coming through and down the jungle Arlong will go. Arlong Shen is more reliable to be used offensively for the taunt than trying to get out of certain danger situations with the heal. Because just like that, there's just too much burst damage in all of Smite yeah. being able to survive against Final K's waxing moon. Because he went for blink, he doesn't have CC immunity. Oh, Jigs waning out here as we can again gets another kill two one and one for the newlywed you see that i see what you did there we could well I, I, I was more referencing did you see that we can got married this weekend oh yes yeah i saw all the tweets and so well, you know us here at high-res studios certainly wish we can the best for him and his family going forward but here as a commentator kind of wishing his team the best going forward this LG squad has been really exciting to watch because it's been weakened at the helm with longtime buddy Kiki Sochiki and seemingly three of these newer guys that are ready to play. You know, uh, you've had Keeks made over from console in the middle lane, not Gino and Clout, Vedium, 
right? Not newer himself, but this nice mix and match of strong veterancy and then brand new players to the scene. And I, I've really enjoyed watching them have their ups and downs. It's all about how they coerce together to find the right objectives, game in and game out, because they're all talented individuals. And you pull in five random ranked all-stars and you could have a bottom of the pack SPL team, which is what LG is trying to avoid. They're trying to become the masters for every split, trying to get to HRX and win this championship. They have their moments for sure, but they've always been tested every single game when they are in an advantage and they get a win. They just don't always seem to be able to close it out, at least in the summer split. They did fantastically in the beginning of the spring, but then began to falter. Yeah, I mean, it's been trouble for them trying to find the, the three game, the two game wins, rather. Sometimes you see them sneaking in a game like Splice here or there. But usually, like you said, it's, it's LG does well or even exceeds expectations and then falters in that late game, which I, I think is something that can be fixed with time. As the squad spends more time together, I think they can improve on that, mainly because players like Gino and, and Keeg's mate are just newer to the league and the way that Smite has played here is very different from where it's played elsewhere. You, you said it yourself, time can heal all wounds and the wounds that Luminosity are experiencing in the beginning of this split can certainly be fixed considering we're nearing the end of the first half. Ultimate used by Jigs to try to avoid all of that stuff, but Cloud comes through with the kill, assists off of everybody. <laughs> Even Kiki getting involved there because somebody else had his passive, so the entire team with that left rotation. Ocean's wanting to be a part of it as well. Didn't he hit really any of the drums, but he made his sound heard. Yeah, he was he was there. Going the, the Bancroft rough start. You lose the ten percent CDR and some of the other stats that you get from Maiden's Blessing. Yet again, just in the nick of time, homie Efe getting off that jet stream. And very importantly, that it didn't get body blocked just to be absorbed as Luminosity feeling confident, pulling the goal through, but resetting a less than half health, afraid of the Jingwei. Kiki needs to be afraid of the Chonga. Not quite. Dances away from it. Avoiding the basic attacks was so important. Kiki also needed to be able to use that Golden Apple of Discordia a little bit earlier. Gino perfectly timing the burp to not get pulled in by Homie Efe. Really big interaction there. Gino not going to be uh, able to be knocked up. And the pull counts as that one, right? During yes. The, during the, uh, the burp, the That's belch. right. The channel, any channeling ability outside of Tremors, you're able to prevent or knock up and disrupt. So able to get on out of there. Homie FA looking for the invade at red. Ocean's here, lying in wait. He will get pinged. But Gino's here as well. Has the ultimate available. Uses it to secure the red buff. There goes Ocean's on the Raijin. And the kill secured by Gino. No, Gino did not need to do that I, last basic attack. I disagree with you on that one. I think that, yes, Clout could have, should have, would have that, gotten that kill. But I, I have seen too many players wind up with a weird escape. The right side channel was open. Homie FA is playing Susano. I don't mind him. Jet streams that. down. Storm Kata's down. Those are his two escapes. The only thing he could do defensively from there was use his ultimate to uh, apply the knockup. Clout still has his ultimate. Could use that for the mounted archery. Gino taking that kill. Unnecessary. Not SPL caliber. Here's the thing. Wow. That's a not big SPL statement. caliber. That's a big statement. Yeah. Because I'm also going to go, I'm going to double down on my statement and say that I liked him taking that. Also, because he's Bacchus. Bacchus is a character similar to Ares that needs his levels. You can be in Athena a little bit behind, and sure, you're you're going to get trounced when you try to initiate, but you can still taunt. You can be a Ymir and be behind, but you can still freeze. At the Bacchus, you are belly flopping in and intoxicating, and if you're behind... That damage is irrelevant, and it needs to be relevant in order for him to do his job. And yes. if you're belly flopping into people when you're five levels down, I mean, uh, you're in for a wild ride. You need to be present in the moment at these quality of matches, and that was just a lapse of judgment and going into autopilot mode. He got off all of his abilities, and then he's chasing down the uh, Susano, trying to body block him. I understand all of that, but going for basic attacks when you're in the red, in 10% health threshold. Clout missed the basic attack. And there was only one more sliver of health that Homie FA was going to survive, and it wasn't a Bacchus attack. Yeah, just not. It was any attack. Like, Clout, if he hit the basic attack, we wouldn't even been having this discussion because Clout would have got the kill. 
Fine, okay, in some trouble, but able to dance away from a lot of the nonsense. Five kills on the side of Luminosity. But only about a thousand gold in the lead as CLG look for and find the invade. Oceans trying to disrupt Harwin from taking that own per portal with the Thunder Crash Mez. And going back into that play a little bit now, normally in the thick of action, like four on four, five on five team fights, sure, like there's too much action going on to the point where there's no time to really evaluate right. that kind of play. But when your own red buff is getting invaded and it's a lone Susano, without any sort of escape, there is a lot of downtime. If you don't have the reaction to, you know, take a step back and think about the given moment, then you need to be able to reevaluate because that extra gold helps Clout separate himself from Snoopy Jing Wei that's really trying to make a presence in the Gold Fury fights. That's fair. That's fair. Clout does have a little bit of a lead above his direct counterpart in the experience column. Could have been more. Very true. Could have been level 12 even faster to get a second relic, force a Gold Fury fight. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Like I said, Bacchus has his own merits, but I think you are more correct than you're not. And that the Hunter probably should have gotten that one. Herwin going to get knocked up here. And the stun not going to be there because of the ultimate chase out. But I'll take that one. Two regular abilities used to get the Yana Assault? Absolutely. Not too, not too shabby whatsoever. Herwin needs to disengage from that one. Held on to his beads. Not that big of a commitment ultimate-wise from either Oceans or Gino. There might have been a small window to find the kill. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fine, okay. Hit by the apple. Gonna get knocked up as well, but players from Luminosity stuck in the mid lane. Thoughts of some strong positioning from CLG. And Luminosity takes some poke from Fine and will sprint on up. Waxing Moon traded out for sprint. A good little favorable exchange, about 45 seconds. Actually less with that 10% cooldown reduction. Looking at about 54 second differential between those two cooldowns. Gino. Going to get pulled in, but belly flopping away. And that's a good thing to do. If you can force Gino to use that Bacchus belly flop defensively, uh, then you're not going to have it to engage on. What was the Homeyefi ultimate? It was a zoning ult, actually. Like, legitimate zoning ultimate to position themselves, CLG, to invade the red. Okay. The knockup lasts a decent amount of time. And with a burst damage from CLG, you're looking to get in and get on out. Just blocking out that whole entrance way. Pretty much. Kiki over here, two levels down on the Discordia, not having a good time. The sustain that the Chunga offers a little bit too much. Oceans blinking over the wall, gonna get hit by the Giannis, but just barely alive. Luminosity's a mid lane rising, still safe and sound. Weakened on the other hand, trying to chase down Homie F.A. Stays a little too long. Snoopy with the last hit on to Weaken. Very unfortunate for Luminosity because Ocean's getting clipped by that Giannis ultimate. He's too afraid to get in the thick of things with those Tycho drums that has such a long range. Maybe if he started using it behind the red buff immediately once that Gino committed inside that team fight, there needs to be more synergy there. When there was a Gino Bacchus belly flop onto Harwin in the tier 1 mid tower, which forced the ultimate, I like the fact that they both didn't commit the ultimates together, but if they both did, there might have been kill potential. There's a lot of damage between the Bacchus Intoxicate and the Tycho Drums, and right now it just seems that Luminosity are holding on to their cooldowns a little bit too long. It, it seems like uh, some of the options, you know, if Oceans is going to go in, then he's going to go in really, really hard, and he can do so from a distance, which is really nice. That's why I like this Raijin pick. I think that the clear that it brings and the presence that it brings in lane is really powerful. Trying to make something happen in the mid lane with these um, support rotations. Jigs trying to figure out how to set up the rest of his teammates because it's a lot more difficult for G or for Jigs than it is for Gino because Gino has the belly flop. If you yep. want to engage with Jigs, you're going to have to look for a really good pull or being able to find the blink, but opting for an early sprint as most supports do to start off the game. Jinx has been a little quiet this game. Yeah, just giving his Hunter a little bit more leeway, whether it's to be aggressive or defensive, that, that upgraded sprint will help him out in lane undoubtedly. Right side, a couple of mages dealing with, well, a mage. Was unclear whether or not Janus really wants to go over there, and now it's relatively clear he doesn't. 60 minutes into the game, Gino still making something happen here, but that's going to force out the ultimate from Hurwin. And there's the knockup. Wrath of Terror, Gino very low, but the pull Ooh. not going to even matter. Jinx is going to get that one with a little bit of his help from his friends. Dancing forward is Oceans. 
But the run is on. Herwin through the portal. Slow down. You get the pull. Homie doesn't have it. Find us. Oceans goes down. Oh, but a wow. giant strife. Oh, my goodness. But it's a little bit too late because not too many members. It's a five on three. Luminosity losing Oceans. And Gino would have definitely wanted them to be available after that crazy great taunt out of week and baiting himself out perfectly. Just a wonderful play. Wonderful play by Luminosity on the surface. But everything comes up wrong. The CLG looks for the gold, and around the corner comes Weekend. 10% available, 5% available. Here comes Weekend, gonna be tossing it out, and CLG takes care of the gold. Weekend could have gone harder. He could have went for the turtle knock up and tried to go all in. I don't necessarily like that plan, so just tossing out the spear, I, I, I thought that was really cute. Harwin feeling very frisky against Kiki and Cloud, avoiding the strife, backing off, but Gino is present. Getting off the portal in time, the knockup is good. Unruly magic forcing out the Aegis just barely. Wow, the movement speed from Giannis is going to be able to get out of this one. So close. I think we saw a 1 HP before he ticked up to 9. Very, very close to death. Harwin there on the Giannis. Important character for him to play, because Harwin has been... Dying a lot lately. He's playing with fire the way he's been holding on to these defensive relics. Playing the Giannis gives you a lot of freedom to play loose, honestly. So I like this mentality, but he's literally stepping at the edge. That's always been his issue. Just the positioning. The positioning. The positioning. He almost found the kill now. He's trying to make a lot of hero plays, but I don't think his team really needs him to when they're getting the goal furies like this. I, you know what? I, I, I don't know if I agree with you or not, and I, I, I fully admit that I'm not sure. Homie FA looking for the pull, can't find it. Homie's had a decent game, right? And fine, okay, two kills, sure. Snoomy, a kill for himself. I'm not sure if we need more of Herwin, because yeah, his team's getting the objectives, but they're only up 2,000. And at the end of the day, I mean, he provides a ton of utility and damage, and I really just haven't seen that for his friends. I didn't see Weekend either. Down goes the jungler. Homie FA would kill number five for CLG. Jigs with Blink now. Kiki is going to be in trouble a little bit with the Waxing Moon doing a little bit of damage, but the cooldown is why it was used. Up in the drums, Ocean's able to take out Erwin. There's another one going the way of Luminosity. Six kills in total, five compared to CLG's. Five. The Giannis ultimate was actually aimed towards the tier two tower from the duel lane. So there was some kind of aggressive play there. Kiki is going to be aggressed on by both Homie FA and Fine OK. Good pressure onto this Discordia soul lane. That's not been really making the impact quite yet. Yeah, I really haven't seen what the goal is here with, with, with the Discordia solo. I mean, clearly the goal here is to provide extra damage. It's also about the CC chain. You got Gino being able to belly flop into the back line, and then whoever gets hit, you're looking for the stripe right under them. Maybe even a taunt into a stripe. You see Athena Discordia very often. So Orlong Shen Discordia makes a little bit of sense as well. And so does Oceans, right? His ability to taunt with that ultimate can also do the same line Kiki up for some of the nonsense that he wants to go ahead and deliver. So a lot of setup for the Discordia. A lot of setup across the board, I mean, for whomever wants to take it. At the end of the day, you could be setting up for Gino. Intoxicate's still a very big deal. So certainly something you want to keep an eye on there. And it does a lot of damage, especially when you have the Stone of Binding from Gino. But keep in mind that Kiki also opting for the same idea. Stone of Binding for him. Now, it doesn't stack whenever you use these two items on different characters. So trying to make for it, CLG needs to just be able to play their own game. Utilize that Shogun's Kasari for Jix because Snoopy is starting to come online on this level 17 Jingwei. Interesting builds. You mentioned the Stone of Binding, but let's talk about the Gem of Isolation, the matching Gem of Isolation for the two mages on Luminosity. Ryzen, Slows are good. It, Ryzen and the Discordia? Ryzen's uh, slow with Percussive Storm after the Raiju is pretty good. You add a Gem of a Isolation on top of that. It's very annoying. This allows Luminosity a lot of freedom to have different target selections whenever they really want to. Because of the long range from the Tycho drums, the Oceans can be on anybody that's potentially running away, whereas Kiki could be the one going in first. I want to talk about the secondary choice here, but in a moment, because Weekend is going to be the secondary choice. The first choice was Homie Effie. Ocean's on the good side of that one. Heroin turns things around and takes care of the jungler. 
Right now, Kiki's still waiting in the wings, and he'll make himself known here. But that's that's a really interesting build path coming out from Kiki. You are the solo laner that loves these little tiny nuances. I know your brain's already thinking about this. Totally break down this build. I mean, for the amount of gold that you're getting for this item, 45 magical power and a little bit of movement speed, you don't have to be able to finish this item right off the bat. It's very cost effective, especially when you're trying to finish off the utility from the Gem of Isolation, the utility from the Stone of Binding, and things are starting to work out for Kiki. He'll finish this item later on because it's not only the healing that he does with any sort of items, potentially the Soul Gem could be of mine, but everybody's healing received. So I don't necessarily mind it. It's 1,500 gold. Yep. It's very cost effective, 150 health. You look at uh, potentially wing blade selection as well. A lot of people will go for a wing blade for a cheap health, pseudo health, and leaving this at tier two for 1,500 gold, you're not really missing out on much considering the differential to tier three is 1,100 gold. Ooh, yeah, it's a large jump. So being able to stick that one, and look at that. Sold it, actually, for a Divine Ruin. Realizes that he's going to need some of that anti-heal a little bit sooner than he had anticipated, so he sells off. The route of healing goes all the way to Divine Ruin. Trying to make something more useful for his team. Snoopy, though, feeling aggressive as his homie Epe. Forcing out the Mounted Archery. Storm caught all three strikes land. Typhoon holding out for the Yagus. Oh, Clout goes down. Wonderful play by homie Epe from a distance. But here comes Weekend and Oceans. Big drum solo. Snoopy's still able to take care of Weekend. Oceans gets rid of the, the carry pull. right after the fact. The pull is good. Oh, Gina going into Jig. Stun is being applied. Kiki gets the unruly magic up, but not too much following. Harrowin with the unstable vortex. Not enough to take out Gino. He doesn't have the ultimate. Thunder crashing in his Oceans. Trying to get away. Barely is Harrowin. Kiki and Jigs dancing around the Tier 2 tower. Kiki able to avoid the pull from Jigs. But now with Oceans here, could spell trouble for Jigs. Ruined. That's it. Nice portal. And Jigs is out of there. Jigs was trying to see what Oceans was going to do if the Thunder Crash was going to be committed. But Fine OK was just casually split pushing the whole time. 1,500 gold now. CLG able to build off of a 5,000 gold lead. Yeah, nice, nice move. Nice move. Nice move. Luminosity down. CLG. Both of these teams have... have uh, Really positive storylines for them, I think. I think CLG trying to get themselves out of this rut. They, this, they are such a better team than we've seen lately. And nobody wants to watch good players fail. I mean, it's just just cut and dry. I'm sure there are haters out of there, out there. But uh, I think everybody just wants to see good things for good people. And across the way, well, talking about haters, Weekend has plenty of haters. But I love watching this Luminosity team, man. I, I really and truly, it is one of the more fun teams I think we've seen come into the Pro League because of the creativity that they have in Weekend and Ch Kiki. Homie, understanding that firsthand. Went into the apple! Oh, Papacito! Harwin takes care of Weekend. And homie F.A. not dead, but not in the fight either. Ouch, buddy. Homie F.A. thanking his lucky stars <laughs> that Heroin's Portals was just there to get him out of danger. And that's the beauty of the Yun, is you don't have to hit the, hit the ultimate for the damage. You just need to get it in the general direction to not only scare your opponents, but get your allies out of there. Love to see Heroin on the utility mages. Guy's a fine mid laner in his own right, sure, but I think Herwin brings more to a team than just pure damage, and his ability to help his team out by way of portals and, and the like, I think is positive. Jigs catching open and sleeping, but he's gonna be able to not dash away. Herwin drops the portal on him. Hot damn, nice play coming out from the mid lane for CLG. Sprint being used from CLG. The dive under the tier two. Gino gonna use oh. the shell, but it's not long enough. Man, the pull, the second pull. Wow, the chain CCs for Jigs have really been making a statement where it matters. He was a little quiet in the early game, but once he hits level 12, he gets the blink. He's looking for these prime opportunity targets. I believe Ocean still had needed to wait, rather, for his cooldown on the purification beads. That was communicated by CLG. That was not a happy little accident from the <laughs> order squad. Yeah, no, not at all. These guys 100% making sure that everybody knows what's going on at the team level. We can get to take care Deleted. of one. 
But Harwin gets lucky with the ultimate and takes care of Weaken right back. That in. was calculated. Oh. That was too close to be lucky. That That's was fair. That was very well timed, very well aimed. Heroin taking out weak and allows Fire Giant for CLG to be confirmed 26 minutes into the game. That's fair. I uh, I, I definitely want to rectify my statement. Heroin earned that kill. Definitely did not get lucky. It's a great lead now. A CLG just blew this game out of proportion. They were only up 2,000 gold maybe 10 minutes ago. And now all of a sudden... After one Gold Fury, losing the second one, no big deal because of the Fire Giant, they're able to start getting some of these Tier 2 Towers. There's still 3,000 gold waiting for them with the Tier 2 Towers between both Duo and Middle remaining. You've already got this lead, Tully. Where is Luminosity looking to stop the bleeding? You don't defend the Tier 1s, but do you defend on the Tier 2s? No. There's no a world where Luminosity tries to defend a Tier 2 tower. Maybe they can look for a potential ambush play in the jungle where they have a lot of vision control. But looking at it at the moment, they don't really have either side completely warded where CLG doesn't have at least counter vision in. So setting up an ambush would be a little bit tricky. There are other options to maybe split push. But if you don't defend your own Phoenix with a CC from Weakens Taunts, no one else is doing the damage. Cloud needs to be in the Phoenix range as well to get that penetration damage truly online to get Jigs out of there. So, 27 and a half here, folks. There's 24 kills, 14 of them belonging to CLG. Stubby and Jigs combine and take care of the left lane tower. Mid lane tower seems to be next on the menu, and this one's going to go down without much contestation, if any. So, a nice job there from CLG just to devastate their opposition and take all of the structures without an issue. CLG have a lot of check marks in their composition between the sustain, mobility between Giannis and the Susano, and then they also got a lot of control from Jigs, and it's been working out. Perfect execution from this late game Sylvanas. The pulls have been very accurate, and honestly, that one pick onto Oceans really started to take control of the team fights. Yeah. Just making sure that the mage was going to turn around. Oceans finishing off Soul Reaver, though, could be a big deal. A lot of burst damage there for the mage. As long as that he's not going to get focused, then yes. But that's not the way CLG is going to intend to play in these team fights. They know their threats. Oceans is the one of them. So they either all in him or they try to avoid a lot of the damage incoming from the Raijin. Mid lane seems to be the focus here for Counter Logic Gaming. Harwind opens up a portal, sending Jigs to the front line. Snoopy and Final K behind him. The mage even further. And the assassin lurking in the jungle. Pull him. Support, gonna miss. Still stepping up. And dealing with Kiki. That's proven to be troublesome. Final K gonna absorb some Phoenix shots. He's not too concerned. He has his own sustain. He also has Jig sustain. Wrath of Terror onto Gino. Going through the portal. Barely able to escape. Ultimate just going to miss. Oh, Gino got his hair cut right there. Not going to get his life cut short, though. We can quite the different story. Falls down to the hand of Harwin. Kiki, Kiki. gets pulled. In a lot of trouble. On back. Has a ton of damage on top. And Snoopy makes sure he's not able to dance all the way back. Five on three. CLG have a commanding advantage to be able to get another Phoenix for at least another 40 seconds without Kiki, without Weekend. Mm. It's up to Gino, Cloud, and Oceans to hold on to this game. One pick and that's game. Right now, not game whatsoever. Counter Logic Gaming needs help getting in there. That said, that's a way to start it. Oceans, see ya! Holy F.A. Picking up another one. Not Gino on the left-hand side. Final K on the run. See ya! Heroin, seven in a row. 18 kills in total. For counter, logic, gaming. Left side Phoenix is down. 40 plus seconds on two. We gets up in five, but it will not be enough. Counter logic taking game number one. Great performance from CLG taking out Luminosity in game number one. Their picks really working out well. They struggled a little bit against Geno's Bacchus being able to engage, but once Jigs became a little bit more relevant, once he got the blink available, he started to disrupt that. Disrupted Oceans from disengaging. The Thunder Crash takes a little bit of cast time to be able to implement, and being between the portal of the Giannis, between the pull as well, found the kill there, and more importantly, during that Phoenix Siege, if you can force out the belly flop, which Jigs was doing consistently, you don't have to worry about that being engaged on you. Exactly. The Bacchus is a strong pick if you are 
playing white if you're making the first move, right? Once you take that step back and you're on the draw, all of a sudden you're sitting there like, well, I can intoxicate him, guys. Yep. Uh, what am I supposed to do to jump up and down? Just troublesome things for the Luminosity gang to counter initiate, uh, counter initiate with, excuse me. And like you said, I mean, this was, uh, I, I loved your call in the mid lane when Jigs found the blank ult. That was clearly the turning yep. point. It was a single kill. It didn't necessarily devolve into, uh, into the larger conversation about objectives or whatnot, but what it did was it let everybody know, what's up, I'm Jigs. I got a blink now, and you're in trouble. And everybody died after that. Oh, yeah. Really, the turning point was support hitting 12. And honestly, it's hard to really tell who the MVP is of that game. There's so many different candidates you could look at for CLG. My money, like, the low-key MVP was Homie FA being able to bounce back after the invade and getting first-blooded. And certainly not a bad look. Let yeah. us know who you think the MVP is in the Mixer chat for me. It might be Jinx. Who is it for you guys on the desk? Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Totally. Game one going to the way of CLG, and they look pretty good doing it. Finch and Aggro here to break it down a little bit for you. I mean, for my money, that mid lane fight was like wait, around the 25 minute mark or so. They get a couple picks, they go to the Fire Giant, and, and really they never look back after that. What got them in position to be able to win that fight so handily? It's Jigs and Heroin, man. I think those two, Tom asked us who we thought was MVP. I think either of those are solid answers. Hurry played so well on this Giannis, and then the bait in by Homie, where the through space and time comes through to help follow up off of it. That's what ends up working out so well there for CLG. Well, it sounds like Mixer Chat really liked that Chang Ah play there by Fine OK in game one. At least he's the one that's selected as the MVP. Man, Chat has their favorites, don't they? <laughs> the, For sure. No matter who, what happens in the game, you can, it's a select pool that you could pull from. Not to say Fine OK had a bad game by any stretch. He did great work. But, I mean, it, when you watch that game, Jigs and Heroin just stood out to me. And maybe that chat really liked it because that's where the interesting matchup was up against the Discordia, and they're just like, great job handling that or, or something to that effect. Sure. But, but sure, certainly Final K had a great game here on the Chang'a, and it wasn't just from a sustained standpoint. Final K was bringing the damage on this Chang'a as well, certainly rotating in on fights and having a big impact. And, and he's able to do that so easily because of that Discordia matchup in that solo lane. And I, I don't mind the, the idea and the direction the Luminosity goes in response to seeing something like Chang'a in the solo lane instead of trying to bully it out, pick that warrior. We've seen teams do that and have it fail against guys like Aquarius for Space Station. Yes. So instead, LG says, all right, we'll just trust our solo player to, to outpace yours in the late game. Discordia just brings different things to a team fight. She brings great CC, she brings great damage, but doesn't bring that sustain. And that's why you're really seeing the Chonga pick overall. I think Kiki played well on it, but it just wasn't quite enough for Luminosity. And what went wrong for LG? Because it really felt like Weekend and Oceans had a lot of pressure early, especially mm -hmm. in the mid-jungle matchup in particular. They did a good job causing problems for Homie and Heroin. I mean, why did they have trouble transitioning that? It's partially because of the sustain from Fine OK sure. for sure. I think it also, Jigs' initiations became too much for them to handle. Once he hits 12, gets that blink, he starts to make a huge impact in that totally fight in that in that fight. And the, the pulls from Jigs were just keeping fights going longer than Luminosity really wanted them to. Yeah, well just